Hey guys, welcome to chapter one, medical terminology. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and let's learn some words, okay? This is like learning a new language. So keep that in mind. Um, if you don't practice it a little bit every day, it's gonna make it a little more difficult. So, you know, when do you study? You could be doing the dishes and saying some of the words or the prefixes or the suffixes, you know, out loud. So, you know, try to use the words as much as you can and it will help. So let me share my screen and let's get this party started, all right? Okay, so introduction to medical terminology. Um, so the word parts are the big key with med term. Um, most of the words are from Latin. There's some of them are Greek or other languages, but the majority of them are from Latin origin. Okay, my people. Um, there are four types of word parts. So the word root is really, what is the word talking about? So gastr, G-A-S-T-R, pertains to your stomach. But then there's a combining form of the word. So the example would be gastro, which is, you know, we're, now we're talking about the stomach or something to do with the stomach. Then we can add a prefix or a suffix to it to, to further explain what it is we're talking about. So if we say gastritis, and we put that itis at the end, we're talking about an inflammation or irritation of the stomach. If we put hyper and the hyper in front of any word root means overactive or too much of, okay? So those are the four types of word parts, the root, the combining form, the suffix or the prefix, okay? Um, you know, there are lots and lots of words that are the roots of words. And we're gonna try to talk about the most common ones, okay? Remember, a word root can't stand by itself, right? It's the basic meaning of the word, and it's usually describing what body part we're talking about. But there's gotta be something else attached to that word root, either a suffix or a prefix, to help further it describe specifically what it is, what thought we're trying to convey, okay? Combining forms. They always include a vowel, usually an O is added to the end of the word root. And it helps with pronunciation because for example, G-A-S-T-R, gastro, can't really say it. But if we put a combining form, we add that O, gastro, you can say gastro, right? So when you're combining two word roots, a combining form is added to the first word root. And a combining form is used at the end of the second word root only if the suffix begins with a vowel, okay? That's a whole lot of information in one little slide, but we're gonna talk about that. So when we look at word roots, so for example, the spinal cord is myelo, muscle is myelo, okay? But one is spelled M-Y-E-L-O, one is spelled M-Y-L-O. Bone is osteo nerve, neuro, and joint is arthro, okay? So there's some basic words for us to get started with. These are the word roots with that O, that vowel at the end that makes them the combining form, okay? So suffixes, when we put a suffix at the end of a word, it's put there so that it completes the term. It can talk about a procedure, a condition. Example, a rhinoplasty. Well, rhino pertains to the nose, Plasty as a suffix speaks to a changing of the shape or size. So a rhinoplasty is a nose job, okay? So that's why we use suffixes, right? With suffixes, a combining vowel is used when the suffix begins with a consonant. So for example, if we're talking about neuroplasty, right? Surgical repair or changing the shape of something, we put neuro, nerve, with the suffix plasty at the end, well, we have to use that combining vowel O because the suffix starts with a P, which is a consonant, okay? Does that make sense? This is more for pronunciation than anything else, okay? A combining vowel is not used when the suffix begins with a vowel. So tonsillitis, when you're joining the tonsils, tonsil with the suffix itis, which is inflammation of, you don't need that O because then it would be tonsilloitis, which sounds really strange. So 
okay? Now, we'll talk about suffixes as noun endings. So a suffix can change the word root into a noun. And we all know back from school, a noun is a person, place, or thing. So an example is cranium. So crany, it's your skull, and the noun ending is um. So that makes it a noun. When we talk about the cranium, we're talking about the skull, okay? All right. Um, suffixes that mean pertaining to, and this one is very common, all right? So it changes the meaning of the word root into an adjective. So it, it describes it. So for example, cardi, right? Or cardio is, is heart, right? And the combining form is cardio. But if we say cardiac, that AC at the end means pertaining to the heart. So cardiac is pertaining to the heart, okay? Suffixes that mean abnormal condition or disease. Suffixes can change the meaning of the word root to describe something wrong with that body part or system. So they use the example gastrosis. So gastro, stomach. Osis is something is wrong. It's broken. It's not working right. An abnormal condition or a disease, but non-specific. Okay. So gastrosis, you know, some kind of disease of the stomach. The suffixes can also relate to the pathology. So suffixes like alga, which means pain, suffering, itis, inflammation, megaly, enlargement. So if I say neuralgia, I'm talking about nerve pain. If I say um, pericarditis, I'm talking about inflammation of the pericardium. If I say cardiomegaly, that's an enlarged heart. Okay, so those suffixes help to describe what the disease process is. And then suffixes can be procedures, like we talked about plasty, right? Well, there's centesis, means we're putting a needle in to remove fluid. Graphy, radiography, means taking a picture or some kind of a record of something. And then it's pronounced stoppy, like um, visual examination of, so a bronchoscopy is we're using a scope to go in and visually examine the bronchus of the lungs, okay? Double R suffixes, they're Greek origin, um, and they're suffixes that begin with two of the letter R. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's like hemorrhage, raj and raja, which means bleeding, right? So a hemorrhage is a sudden extreme loss of blood in a short period of time. Okay, everyone's heard the word hemorrhage. And rafi is surgical suturing. So, you know, sewing up a wound. Myorafi is the surgical suturing of a muscular wound. Okay. And then rhea, everybody knows rhea, is the flow or discharge of body fluids like diarrhea, frequent flow of loose watery stools, right? Steatorrhea is fatty, frequent loose watery stools. Okay, so that's what rhea is. Rexis means rupture, okay? Myorexis is rupture of a muscle. Okay. And then prefixes. Now they're put at the beginning of the words and they usually talk about either the location of something, a time or a number. So like pre, pre and post and peri. Pre means before. So if I say prenatal, it means before birth because natal is, you know, nate is birth and all is pertaining to prenatal, right? So before birth. Sometimes they can be confusing, right? So they have similar spellings, but they have different meanings. Like the examples, the first two are ab and ad. Ab means away from and ad means toward. So a good example for that is abduction. If I am abducting my arms, I'm spreading them apart. If I am adducting my arms, I'm bringing them closer together. So you add together. It's a good way to remember that. And then we have inter, which is between. And then we have intra, which is inside something. So if I give you an intravenous, I'm going into your vein, right? So in, there's, it's not intervenous. We don't go between the veins, right? It's intravenous into the vein. So inter means between, intra means inside. 
Um, so knowing the meaning of the word parts sometimes makes it possible to figure out what the definition is. So if you come across a word that you don't know, sometimes you can figure it out, right? If you stay calm, cool, and collected. What you always have to do is separate the word, right? S start with the suffix and then try to identify what does the suffix mean? So if you see, for example, anuria, A or A-N as a prefix means without. So you know it's without urea. What do you think anuria means? No urine, right? Amenorrhea, you know, A, right? And menorrhea, rhea, discharge of fluids, menor, which is menses, period. Amenorrhea is no periods, okay? So sometimes you can figure it out as long as you stay calm, cool, and collected. Um, you can use a medical dictionary. You've got your, your phone, like I said, um, but sometimes you're gonna get maybe a freak word here and there because not all of these words are made up of word parts, but most of them are. But an example, like otorhinolaryngology. So ology, study of, larynge pertains to, it's the larynx of the throat. Con you don't need the combining vowel, that O, because the word root joins a suffix that, that starts already with a vowel right? Ology. So we don't have to put laryngeo. It's just laryngeo. And then the combining form, rhino, nose, we do need the O because it's the word rhino is joining another word root, right? We're putting two word roots together. So odo rhino laryngology. Okay. That's a mouthful, right? Okay. Um, Sometimes you can guess at the meaning of a word, but double check yourself just to make sure that you, you've got it correct. Um, use your medical dictionary. It really does help. And you can get a medical dictionary online. And, and online, you can even get pronunciations, right? So that will really help you to hear it and for you to practice saying the words out loud. Um, you know, when you're using Google and you're using the internet, please make sure you're using reliable sources. Um, I will put up some links for reliable sources uh, for medical dictionary and also for the Merck manual. The Merck manual is kind of the clinical Bible and there's a free online professional version. Pick a disease, any disease, and you will get the most relevant and recent evidence-based information on the Merck manual pertaining to that disease and the etiology of it, the pathophys, all of that, okay? Um, pronunciations. So, you know, I said it in class, sometimes people, oh, I can't say the word. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You have to practice saying it because it's like a, learning a new language. So you practice saying the word, try to sound it out first. The emphasis is always shown in the big bold face letters. So edema, edema, right? The secondary emphasis is shown bold, but in lowercase letters, appendicitis, right? And then you just practice saying the words. Spelling's important because a lot of medical terms can look alike and sound alike. There's dysphagia and dysphagia, D-Y-S-P-H-A-G-I-A, -A, dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, D Y S. Um, P-H-A-S-I-A, -A, dysphagia, difficulty speaking. So, but they, they look alike, they sound alike. Some people pronounce them the same way, dysphagia, dysphagia. I like pronouncing them a little differently so that it can articulate my meaning. Um, and there are some weird rules um, with the medical terms because of the Greek or Latin origins. <clears throat> um, English endings are usually adopted for a lot of terms. I mean, all language comes from Latin originally. Um, but, you know, sometimes you have to look things up a little bit more in depth to really understand them. So be careful with those look-alike, sound-alike words. Uh, here's some examples they give you. So there's arterio, athero, and arthro. So arteri is artery, athro is plaque, usually hypercholesterolemia causes plaque to build up inside the arteries, but arthro is pertaining to the joint. So they're very different, but they're pretty similar in the way they look, right? So be cognizant of that. Some other ones, ectomy, ostomy, 
ectomy, right? So an ectomy is a surgical removal of, right? So he had a lobectomy. We removed the lobe of his lung. An ostomy is a surgical creating of an opening or a hole to the body surface, you know, a colonostomy. An otomy is a surgical incision into something, right? So again, similar, but very different meanings, okay? You've got ilium and ilium. These are really, they sound exactly alike, okay? So the ilium spelled with an E, I-L-E, is pertaining to the longest portion of the small intestine, duodenum, jejunum, ilium, okay? Um, but if you remember that ilium spelled with an E like intestine, maybe that'll help. But ilium with an I, it's your hip bone, right? The iliac crest is the hip bone that you can feel, right? That kind of juts out. So they very much can look alike and sound alike. Um, abbreviations are a whole nother story. There is a whole list of abbreviations that are now deemed do not use by the Institute for Safe Medical Practices. Um, I will put that most recent list also in files up on Blackboard for you guys to refer to. Um, and you, you must be familiar with the do not use abbreviations. We used to use, for example, QHS meant at our sleep. Can't use that anymore. We have to actually write out at bedtime. Okay. So, and some of them are confusing in the way they look. All right. That's it for chapter one. I want you guys to practice doing some of the learning exercises and maybe we'll do some together, but I'm going to see you in class. Peace.